coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. Today we reach week 15 and we've got a good matchup in store between the Washington Commanders and the Denver Broncos. And off we go from Denver. And as we see so frequently here in Colorado, that one over the inline. So it'll come out to the 25. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Once more, Gibson. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. This defense for the Broncos, they put together a strong effort last week in the win over Chicago. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. Shoves him aside. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll go as a pickup of 14 and a Washington first down. Third and short, so didn't need much, but got a little extra on the backside. Nice run. Chewed up the yardage, didn't he? To me, that was offensive line with leverage, good blocking angles, taking on a stacked defensive front. And once they chopped that little hole in the beginning, he took it and rambled. And just the third play from scrimmage, wanted to avoid the three and out and did just that. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Here's Gibson on the read option. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. On first and ten, it's Gibson. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. This time they'll throw it with Hal. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game was we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Hal throwing on third down here. And that will be incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. So on fourth down, Washington get a call on Tress Way to punt it away. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. He'll return it from the six. Only 29 yards on the punt there. Definitely not his best. And it'll be first and ten Broncos from deep in their own territory. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. Pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Go. 
Again, it's Williams. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. The Broncos send out their punter now as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. On the NFL scoreboard, an update from up in Seattle, and early on, the driver's seat belongs to the Seahawks. That one of the many games we'll be watching around the NFL here these final few weeks of the campaign. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, the gap man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. On second down, a run with Gibson. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Throwing here, Howell. Rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Broncos are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. So a first interception thrown for him there, and that really not the best decision either. Not at all, and that's something he did not do in their victory last week. No interceptions in that game, but this defense, they're able to take advantage of an early mistake. Now let's see if they're going to turn it into points. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. It was Isaiah Johnson there to make the stop. Second and 10, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's going for him, but this is intercepted. Picked off by Benjamin St. Juiced. And he will bring this one back. It is a pick six for a Washington touchdown. Well, what a response by that defensive unit, Charles, because they just saw their offense throw the interception. They come out there, not only get an interception of their own, but they take it back for the touchdown. I won't sing it because no one wants to hear that, but perhaps an early case of anything you can do, I can do better between these defenses. A lot of people came to expect the offense to light this game up, but so far... The defenses are stealing the show. Extra point attempt here still to come. And the kick is good, and the Commanders out to a 7-0 lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Taken at about the one. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Denver off 
offense at the line, ready to go. Checkmate. They currently Checkmate. sit one game over 500 thanks to their victory a week ago. Yeah, you know, Charles, they've been really an up and down team all year. Do you think that they have enough to get into the playoffs? Well, you did mention they've been up and down all year, so to me, it depends on what week you catch them. When they're at their best, I think they're definitely playoff worthy. But to me, they haven't been able to bring the intensity week in and week out, and that could be their Achilles heel. The pass there complete to Sutton. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Deron Payne, the big D tackle there to make the stop. For the Broncos, it's seven and six, a game over 500 on the year. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind and the best way to get in that good frame of mind, winning. So they come in feeling good. They've got the home crowd behind them. I think they're going to be tough to beat in this one. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Here we go. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, when well, we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell okay, us right. is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Now back to throw. And they hit him as he throws, as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Commanders come through with a fourth down stand. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And yeah, they've got themselves a 7-0 lead here, but that, you recall, was a defensive touchdown, so still nothing as of yet for this offense. Well, they're happy to have the lead. We've got to cut them a little bit of slack. It's still early enough, just a couple of drives so far, but if this one goes nowhere, those adjustments that we talk about, they shouldn't wait for halftime. They should go ahead and start working on them right now. From just shy of midfield, Powell. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. I think he just made the punter a little bit jealous there. There was some serious hang time on that ball. Deep downfield, and while it didn't connect, it certainly sent a message, didn't it? The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Al, he'll look to throw it. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side, their defense came through, was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us. No luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge, and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he stopped immediately there. 
call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He'll get that complete to Albert O. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now to the air on first and 10. Throws right side and that's complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. Call that a very strong gain of 24. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he will take it in. Touchdown, Commanders. A great play there. His fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And the Commanders have taken a two-touchdown lead now. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point right down the middle, and it's now 14 to nothing. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the inline. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a Let shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll drop to throw. 
And going for Hamler, but this is intercepted. And the Commanders are going to take possession of the football. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. First down, Hal. That's out to the flat for Gibson. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Off play action, it's Hal. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. That's a step in the right direction defensively here because you're facing this sizable deficit. They're going to need more plays like that. A good sack, though, good effort there. And what you're hoping is, as you said, a step in the right direction. And that means it's something to build on. So you get the first one, and hopefully that can ignite them. And now they can make a few more plays and get back into this game. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an outer boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. With a play fake, and now here's Hal to throw it. Throw to the right here, taken in by McLaurin. And the Commanders are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. They'll run with Gibson. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. One more time with Gibson. And he's in. Touchdown, Commanders. Antonio Gibson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Commanders will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Well, I don't think that we're ready yet to say the route is on, but they have certainly looked near flawless here in this first half, and now an extra point away from making it 21-0. Yeah, and your experience led you to say that because we have both seen those 21 to nothing leads come and go in this league, but this one feels pretty darn secure, and here's the other part. Even when people chip away at it, it forces you into being almost perfect on the other side, doesn't it, in order to try to mount a comeback. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling. Three score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. Cole Holcomb proving too much there for the offensive line. He gets the sack. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report.
And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. We'll see, Charles, if they had a chance to hit the reset button at halftime. They have not scored. They're facing this big deficit. And if they're going to come back, it's going to have to start right now. Yeah, and for them, it's not dwelling in the negative because, yes, they were totally ineffective in the first half. But we've seen many games that have flipped around in the second half. It all starts with this drive right here. They get something good going, put some points on the board, they begin to have hope. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 34-yard line. He'll look to throw. And the Washington pressure gets to him. He will go down. Montez Sweat in there to get him. And that is sack number six now for him on the year. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. He really hasn't been able to get on track running the football, averaging less than four yards a carry. Yeah, I think that they're going to enjoy the film session because all the defenders are filling their proper gaps on just about every play. And you know what they always say for a defensive coach. When I... And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. Montez Sweat picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And, partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting a sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. They'll set up to throw. He'll go up top here for Hamler. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Out there set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. Well, they got to be thrilled with how they've operated so far in this one. They've got the nice lead, and now a chance to score here on three straight possessions. Yeah, and the way that they are rolling, I just don't know how they get slowed down because they certainly are operating at peak efficiency right now. They might want to think about giving some of their backups a little bit of work, though. Let some other guys get on the field and do their thing and save some of this for the next time out. On second down, here's Gibson again. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Sometimes I think cornerbacks can benefit from the fact that quarterbacks might just forget about the idea that they might be near the line of scrimmage. How about the anticipation there sneaking in and making a big play in the backfield? A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. From the gun on third down, Howell. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Nick Benito. And the Broncos will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. 
Boy, so another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. That was nice work there defensively to force the incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet, so they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. Second and ten now, third quarter action in Denver. On second down, they'll run it here. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. And how will throw it. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception they got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. No gain on the play there. Second down. They run it again with Williams. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Defense able to get there, swarm to the football, zilch, zero nada there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. That's complete, it's Okuebunam. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll bring up fourth down. A field goal try forthcoming now for the Broncos. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. And this one is right down the middle. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points. But that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. So they hit pay dirt, but don't count it yet. There's laundry on the field. We'll see what the penalty flag is about. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Faking the handoff. Howell. He's going to let it go again. He's got a man complete. A huge play there for Washington. 71 yards. We're off to the fourth quarter here in week 15. Happy holidays to all. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. A give running right, Gibson. 
And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Antonio Gibson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Commanders are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Point after try forthcoming. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So already not the best of kick returns there, but that penalty, that adds insult to injury and backs him up even closer to the goal line. Yeah, not hey. ideal field position to begin a drive, is it? Because the extra pressure now goes on the offense. They've got to get some early yards and get away from the shadow of their own goalposts. What every offense wants to do in this situation, get two first downs to help out with field position at the least. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Let's go now. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They're going to look to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone. And the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. And the commanders are going to take possession of the football. And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And, Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there. Got a nice interception and set up their offense in great shape. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. On second and 12, Powell. Fine time to his left. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. So they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. Usually going to pick up a holding call. Second down. Howl now. And this one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football. Nearly a fourth pick of the ball game. A CD, they're up big, but they're still passing it. I mean, this is an offense that's had a lot of success in this game, and it seems like they're just having fun out there. And it does feel like there's been a shift out there, doesn't it, partner? Listen, if you're up, you can continue to do what you want to do. It's up to the other team to make you change how you do things. They'll continue to throw it around until stopped. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extreme. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Well, if nothing else, some signs of life here, Charles, because you're facing the big deficit, but at least they were able to prevent three more from getting on the board there with a nice block. And that's how they're comforting themselves on the sidelines right now because they certainly didn't execute well on that play at all. Bottom line, exactly what you said. They didn't need the three, but they sure don't like giving up a block. They'll have something to work on as they get into practice next week. It'll be a gain of 10 to start Ready. the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Back to throw here. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. I mean, and my goodness, another interception. 
Picked off by Jamin Davis. And the Commanders are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. And you have to wonder, Charles, a game like this, five interceptions, what does this do to the psyche of a young quarterback? Well, based on the fact that he's still out there and he threw a fifth interception, I'm wondering if his head coach believes that he's really strong mentally and wants him to play through it. Because otherwise, you need to get him out and fight another day because this could leave lasting damage if he keeps throwing interceptions. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, there's absolutely been no stopping this offense today. They already have the big lead, obviously. Here in the fourth quarter, they could coast to the end, but right now they're not passing up any chances to put up some garbage time yardage. And, partner, why would they? Because who knows the next time you'll be playing as well as you have today. When you're in that zone, you go ahead and take full advantage of it. You don't worry about your opponent. You just worry about what you're doing. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Throwing on second and long. Powell. Man open is Robinson. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 13-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, they have been unstoppable this afternoon, Charles. They just went after them from the start. And pass plays like we just saw, they're continuing their dominance here despite the big lead in the fourth quarter. And that they have in every way. And plays like that across all phases of the game, they've just been effortless for them in this one. And that's what's helped them build such a large lead and allowed them to smile as this game continues. A tackle made there by Caden Stearns. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Powell. That's out wide here for Robinson. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Commander's football as we get back to it. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They'll run with Robinson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Again, it'll be Robinson. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Well, I'm not sure what other ground there is to cover here. I mean, this offense has been amazing. Just total domination, Charles. They've clicked so well. And if you really focus in on the offensive line, they protected well when they wanted to throw the ball. They moved people off the line of scrimmage when they wanted to run it. Smiles all the way around. This offense has been really good in this one. Kick team out there for the Commanders as they send this one away. Fields in right around the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Ready. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, We've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests. 
but in almost all of them, both offenses put up at least 200 yards in the game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Here we go, here so we after go. the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Looking to throw. Oh, the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. Montez Sweat able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Montez Sweat, two plays in a row now that he has gotten in there for the sack, and it brings up fourth down. So it's Washington getting the victory here. Charles, uh, for this losing side, their heads are hanging as they walk off the field today. And really, I mean, we know why those three turnovers by that offense, that's ultimately what doomed them. And this is what coaches preach all the time to every team that we ever talk with. Taking care of the ball offense, trying to take it away on defense. And let's face it, when you give it away three times in one game, you make it very difficult for your team to get the W. So for the Commanders, they get back to 500 now as the win moves them to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they'll return home next week to take on the Detroit Lions. Meanwhile, for Denver, their playoff hopes take a hit as they drop to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they'll try to get back on track next week as they head to Dallas to take on the Cowboys.